Pitaji, you can start. Namaskar and a very good evening to all. This is Arvita Shavasarve welcoming you all to this online incubation women entrepreneur program with an intention to enrich you all in their respective fields. Well, as you know, the highlights of today's sessions are we are very glad to have our Honorable Dean Dr. N. Basungi Ji with us. A very good evening, ma'am. As good a evening. chief guest who will be enlightening all our learners on the topic of the Entrepreneur Development and Incubation Program. Apart from that, today we have a guest speaker, Dr. Anupriya Pandey with us and our academic representative, Dr. Parvati Prasad Rao. Well, now I would request you all to be a part of our traditional auspicious limelighting ceremony as a tribute to Mother Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge, blessing all humanity under the presence of our honorable chief guest, Dr. N. Vasungi Ji. Hereby requesting ID team to play our virtual limelighting ceremony. Thanks, IT team. Well, as you all know, that the entrepreneurship development is the means of enhancing the knowledge and skills of entrepreneur through general classrooms, coaching, and program trainings. The main point of the development process is to strengthen and increase the number of entrepreneurs. And we, with the intention of conducting this entrepreneurship program, is to help in developing entrepreneurial abilities, the skills that are required to run a business successfully. Sometimes students may have skills, but it requires polishing and incubation. And with that intention, we are glad to have our honorable chief guest with us to enlighten us with this topic of the entrepreneur development and incubation. With great pleasure and pride, let me invite our chief guest, Dr. N. Vasunjigi, for her inaugural speech on the topic of entrepreneurship development and incubation program. But before that, dear viewers, I would like to brief you all with a short introduction of her profile. Allow me, ma'am, to read your profile, please. Well, as you all know, currently she is heading as the Dean Schools of Home Science Professor, Avinash Lingam Institute of Home Science and Higher Education for Women Computer. Well, has a, as her specialization field, she is specialized in textile management, extraction of co-friendly fiber, natural dyes, technical textiles, and medical textiles. She has overall 30 years of experience in research and teaching with an academic of UP, PG, MPhil, and PhD in administrative capacity. She has many accolades to her credentials, contributions to research and technology developments. Her key highlights has been three models were developed and introduced by her in the field of extraction of underutilized fiber for technical textiles. Well, her projects has been applauded with the principal investigator, Currently, the research project, which I would like to highlight, will be EPG Parchtala with 1.12 Pro sponsors by MHRD and UCG to development of 640 e-modules. UGC SAP Special Assistant Program benefiting 56.8 lakhs. Two research products done in collaboration with Central Self Board. Well, her generals has been published where Internationally 42, nationally 27, and she has also co-authored 35. 
the book published totally by her has been 12 and the many organizations has conducted the seminars and conferences and workshops where internationally three national 33 and as a co-coordinator 10. Well, as far as our contribution has been concerned, especially in the field where I would like to highlight will be Signum contribution in expression in terms of national mission on education through ICT development of e-content in home science in PG levels, UCG, SAP, DRS, and MOU with other educational research institution. This was the innovations and area of specializations techniques in weaving, printing, dyeing, textile designing, advanced fiber constructions, textile texting, textile quality analysis, a parallel marketing and technical textiles. Last but not the least, her certificate of appreciation, that is Tamil Nadu State AIDS Control Society and State Blood Transfusion Council, implementation of sm small saving schemes, certificate of appreciation for painting with fabric pen, Certification of achievement was given by XSI 100 Biennial Conference of Home Science Association of India, New Delhi. And the awards that she has been awarded was the JC Bose Memorial Award of Indian Science Monitor, Distinguished Accomplishment Award in Textile by Texas Tech University, and Kasuvan on Women Women's Day by Lawrence Club. With great pleasure and pride, let me invite our chief guest, Dr. N. Vasanji, for her inaugural speech. Over to you, ma'am. Good evening, all of you present in the virtual mode. I thank, uh, um, yes, I think it is off. Yes. Um, uh, uh, Ms. Rai. Uh, for uh, 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 giving my, uh, uh, that is uh, my biodata in a uh, that is elaborate manner. Uh, but uh, I'm very happy. This I'm joining with you for, uh, I think, two times or three times with you uh, because you are uh, giving a novel ideas and a novel forum for all over India. So you're connecting all the people all over India. I'm very happy for this. So uh, I'm joining with, with the, this Admanibar Bharat, another initiative of incubation through Women Entrepreneurship Program. I take uh, privilege to uh, greet you all as chief guest for today's session. Thanks to Pradeep ji and Arpita ji and Mm, your uh, demand is the main uh, pillar of uh, our nation. Uh, so the women will take part all over the world in all the uh, part that is uh, po po politics and uh, economical and uh, that is a business mode and uh, CEO for uh, uh, many, uh, um, that is uh, a very uh, privileged uh, forum like uh, State Bank of India and uh, Nui Flip, uh, that is uh, Indra Nui, and many, many others, uh, Kalpana Chavla, many, many persons we can give, example, Indra Gandhi, Jailalita, and many persons we can give, that is a bold ladies. So we we need a only, not only a bold, and we need a, that is a, a good knowledge to exhibit all those things. So I think uh, uh, naturally all women are very brave in nature, and uh, economical, uh, this uh, economist also because if we uh, that is uh, men give some money, they they used to save some money for a future without knowing that person. So that is that start from a small child onwards. They saving uh, quality and they won't uh, spend money. Through, that is whatever they are having money, they won't spend. So all are having that business uh, idea in their mind. Uh, so now the open that is a, this is challenge to all the uh, women to face all the person in the world in the office in the political ground because why I am telling the political ground now only it uh, completed in our uh, um, the, uh, in our uh, uh, this uh, Tamil Nadu the local body election was conducted in this election uh, fifty percent of the women are uh, becoming a mayor. In a, from 21 to 55 years. So I'm very happy to see that. So the, uh, they, they, they have to exhibit all their challenges 
and uh, they have to spend their money whatever allotted for their uh, in that uh, for that uh, village or um, that is city or cosmopolitan town they have to spend that money uh, for many um, uh, that is um, uh, important uh, work uh, to be developed in the road uh, that is water connection sewage and everything so it is very important for them so uh, throughout the um, that uh, city so now we can see many women or uh, take part in the politics and we can see many ceos are coming in for a bigger uh, forum i already told that state bank of india chairman is a, uh, is a lady and uh, indra new year we know uh, that is a pepsi and many many persons we can tell for that like that all women has to come for, forward to for the business in our university we are having an entrepreneurship uh, development uh, department is there and in that department we are have giving a uh, that is um, uh, that is uh, we are giving uh, we are collecting all the women who are interested in uh, business we are uh, motivating them to start a business whatever they need and whatever available in that area so we, we are, i can tell in coimbatore is the um, there is a cotton city and uh, there is a cotton city means uh, we are having many uh, spinning uh, um, uh, this uh, mills are there and uh, that is uh, with the uh, connecting with this many uh, supporting uh, uh, this uh, business is there it's to collect the fiber and uh, dyeing it uh, the dyeing the yarn and uh, weaving the fabric and uh, tie and dye batik everything they are doing in coimbatore we are collecting that persons we are giving training for them and they are doing very happily and uh, we are uh, giving a, that is a, a how to face the uh, business uh, um, that is a bank uh, bankers and we call the bankers to help them we are giving a, it is a, a, if we are uh, they are, they know that we are giving a training they used to give a, a two lakhs for them for a coaching so uh, already you told that my uh, major project is a special assistance program in that we have extracted many fiber it is many type of fiber from our that is unutilized underutilized uh, plants which is available on the road sides we are collecting that uh, plants and remove the fiber by decortication and many other methods methods we are giving training to that ladies who ever like that and uh, we are giving uh, training to produce a home textiles for them a uh, home textiles means the floor mat uh, curtains and other things how to make the the fiber to be a soft and and many things we are doing and how to produce the uh, so it is a uh, brick with the use of fiber uh, uh, that is that, that will help the uh, this uh, builders not to break that fiber uh, so brick uh, it is uh, very quickly it will have a strengthen to that building also many things we are giving and we are having incubate entrepreneurship incubation center also there so uh, the ch children who are interested uh, to sell their product in that uh, in an, uh, in our university and outside also we are having that opening and we are uh, giving a training for the students to give a millet uh, uh, one project is going on in that uh, dst project uh, millet project in that uh, that millet uh, then many millets are there then type of millets that millets are um, they are making into a flakes and that flakes is uh, we can use as a uh, that is what flakes uh, we are using for a uh, daily in the morning like that we are producing many many persons are coming inside the uh, campus and they are buying that uh, flakes like ragi flakes and uh, many flakes we are they are getting we are giving uh, to the in a subsidized uh, money also so it is useful to the public also and our students also and in textiles they are producing the accessories like here uh, stead and uh, dollars and many things they are doing with the clay and uh, beads like that and the stitching their uh, uh, clothes like uh, bags and other things and uh, many things they are selling in the Uh, we are giving that um, place uh, for selling so they are uh, exhibiting their uh, merit and uh, uh, that creativity 
to the to others and it motivate them uh, them to start a start up program outside also the the uh, who were done ug or pg they are going outside and they are opened this one and online also they are selling so these type of uh, entrepreneurship and the incubation center is helping to these students this is um, that is uh, we can see uh, how uh, the, the that platform is useful for the uh, students and uh, the, also the health self help group uh, we are having about uh, 50 self help groups they we used to often meet them and uh, we are having a maha mela uh, yearly twice and they used to exhibit and uh, sell their product in that uh, uh, maha mela um, uh, that is uh, that function also and uh, we are having uh, that is uh, uh, we are uh, having that uh, um, connectivity with the government and uh, that initiative to encourage women participants and uh, we used to give a Bhadi Magila bank business loan, uh, Dina Sakti scheme, and uh, many other uh, uh, that is Pradham Mandri Mudra Yojana. We are giving training and uh, exposure how to get that training and uh, go, how to get the uh, funds from the government. These are we are giving. Uh, we adopt that uh, about 21 uh, villages in the NSS. There also we spread all those things and they are um, uh, they are expertise in the, um, doing the business. They start up with the fifty thousand. Now they become uh, the ten lakhs uh, uh, owner for each uh, product. And uh, many are doing the millet uh, product and uh, many are doing how to stitch uh, blouses and uh, gowns and many things uh, we are stitching and giving. They are uh, giving um, that is um, training for them. Many training they are undergone in our university to do the tie and dye, batik and uh, how to do the dyeing, everything, natural dye, natural funny finishes, everything uh, we are giving training and uh, they are well versed in that area. So it is very useful to the to our, uh, their, uh, that is uh, in and around Koyambatur, that villages and also our students. And uh, one time, please come to our university, visit our uh, incubation center. We are giving uh, all the benefits to them and the motivation to the uh, students as well as the villages. Thank you very much for your uh, uh, this opportunity to be or take part in this innovation incubation center opening. I'm very happy to be with you for uh, many times in, uh, in, for, that is, uh, in forthcoming meetings also. Thank you. Thanks, ma'am. Thanks for enlightening all of us with your enthusiastic the world. There, ma and enthusiastic Please unmute. World. Hello. Please unmute, ma'am. Yes, I have. I'm not Thank hearing. You. Pradeep ji, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I can. Okay, okay. Oh, well, uh, could you, Pradeep ji, can you? Yeah, please. Thanks, uh, ma'am. First of all, I request uh, my IT team to uh, display the uh, letter of acknowledgement. Thank you. Thanks for to uh, Dr. Rasugi, ma'am. This has been third year that we are being connected with uh, Arnas Lingam University. Uh, various of the intensives, various of the uh, NSS program we actually did with Arnas Lingam University and the students. I'm really grateful that I'm getting the support uh, through Arnas Lingam, through Dean, madam, through all the faculties, management, and students. And uh, I'm sure, of course, this incubation too will give a different idea and different uh, with a different perspective where our students will get enlightened about how the really the incubation or the entrepreneurship journey is. Madam's experience or Madam's, of course, hand holding for those things and the support which has been uh, leveraged through the universities that is awesome. I can very well vouch that uh, through the NSS that 20, uh, 21 villages or 24 villages across uh, Quantur area. I had been to uh, working with these NSS centers with uh, Abhinas Lingam and with NSS of other colleges, but they are working awesome on that. And uh, Madam rightly said that a uh, woman has a powerful tool and a woman has a powerful entity in the society. Um, I do find that it is good that woman actually is uh, working in the space of politics also. And Madam actually covered that how 50% of the mayors been selected and they will be actually doing uh, or shaping the country's future, making others to actually get on and experience on, making others to actually learn on what exactly the politics is. 
and how we best we can deliver on once we deliver on the government programs. Of course, you colleges and universities are very well equipped uh, for the entrepreneurship. And we started this particular idea, not because that uh, we were new to this, but only thing once we were uh, undertaking the uh, four months of program that is Mission Sakti program, several of the women, those who were there, and they were actually uh, uh, working as a uh, director on various boards, various of the organizations. But I somehow feel that um, they don't know anything about the entrepreneurship exactly. They don't know about the market. They don't know about the market research. They don't know about the uh, compliances which is required. They don't know about the laws. And this gives a better idea actually to initiate this particular incubation program. And that is why we initiated this. We got good uh, support from all the academicians and uh, of course uh, from the national lingam too and the students too. And we have some uh, 25 of the sessions. Uh, this is the third week and there will be a somewhere 12 weeks down the line. And our students will be learning on and uh, doing uh, two or three assessments and assignments too on this. So thanks again. Thanks again to Vasugi Madam for helping us, supporting us in every coin. Thank you, Madam. Uh, I request my IT team to close the uh, presentation here. That is letter of acknowledgement. Thanks. Thanks to IT team. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks, ma'am. I can only say a few words about you looking to your uh, enthusiastic uh, speech that you have given to us that make yourself the best and destiny will do the rest. So we need empowered women like you as you shared the graph of your Tamil Nadu with the participations of the women entrepreneurs. I think that the leadership that we all look in you, I think your state might have been in influenced by your personality. So please showering your blessings on us and uh, please do take care of yourself. Glad to have you with us. Uh, thank you, madam. Thank you for your uh, concern. And uh, I always shower my blessing always to you. Thank you. Privilege, ma'am. Okay. Well, now as we move to the second part of our program, well, as you know that today's session has been dedicated to the topic of a market research, right? And market research involves asking the right question in the right way to the right people. This gives your business a direction and help to stay on top of what your customer wants and to show. And for that, we are very glad to have with us as a guest speaker, Dr. Anupriya Pandey, Teaching Faculty of Commerce School of Management Studies, IGNU and IC. IC Council Member, IGNU Student Entrepreneurship Coordinator. Well, glad to have you with us, ma'am. But before I invite Dr. Pandey on board with us, let me give you a brief introduction about her profile. Allow me to read your profile, ma'am. Well, she has overall 17 years of experience in hand in the field of teaching, training, research, and consultancy special areas of interest in entrepreneurship, have conducted several national and international training programs for teachers, trainers, which includes two weeks national faculty development program in entrepreneurship supported by NSTEDB, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, and six week international faculty development program in entrepreneurship sponsored by Indian Technical and Economic Corporation, Ministry of External Affairs, Government of India, New Delhi. As she has also served as program director, had gave consultancy to MSME as an enterprise development specialist, cluster development initiative, IIL and FS. Well, as far as academic qualification is concerned, she is PhD from the University of Deen Dayal Upadhyay, Gorakhpur. Well, MCOM from the again, Deen Dayal Upadhyay Gorakhpur University in the field of commerce. And her work experience, as I said, has been in the field of teaching, training, research, and consultancy with the publications to her credentials. Total research paper published has been 34. And she's also been a membership of professional body, statutory body, internal and external, membership of professional uh, body, as I mentioned from the period of uh, life member in the Indian Commerce Association and with the school board SOPs. So before taking much of time, 
Now, let me have the pleasure and pride to invite Dr. Anupriya on board. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Arpita. And thank you, Pradeep Singh Ji, for uh, having me here and, and to interact with the uh, girl students and uh, bloody entrepreneurs over here. Well, I, in fact, I belong to Uttar Pradesh only, although I'm working in Delhi, but I belong to Uttar, Uttar Pradesh, Gorakhpur. And as I was listening to uh, what Dr. Uh, Vasudhi Raja was saying, like in the states like Tamil Nadu and uh, for that matter, all West and Southern part of India, that there is always, you know, this thing, this, that there is something in their, how do I say, mentality. Entrepreneurship is nothing, or maybe even if we are talking of uh, MSMEs or whatever, it is nothing new for them, right? But still, even when we are talking of Northern part of India, we are somewhere lacking in this. Although we all know the importance of entrepreneurship and its role in economic development of any nation, especially for the notion, nation like ours, ours. Right? right? This is very, very important. But still somewhere we are lacking. And uh, I feel uh, the work that you guys are doing, it is uh, going to give, or, or maybe it's going to become a huge platform wherein you can help all the you know entrepreneurs or budding entrepreneurs who are trying to make their uh, career in this particular field. And you will encourage them to take entrepreneurship as their first choice rather than taking it as the last resort. So considering this, as it has been discussed earlier, that topic for today's discussion is market research, right? What is market research? Research. Why is it so important? And how should we do market research? This is. These are the three. I'll, I'll uh, try to divide the whole, you know, talk on these three parts. Okay. What is market research? Why is it being done? What is the importance of it? And how it should be done, right? If we talk of startups every year, you know. Thousands of uh, startups are mushrooming up. This is very encouraging. But at the same time, we should not forget that 90% of these startups are failing. And believe me, they're failing at the initial stages. And they're not failing at these initial stages because, the, because of the lack of funds or something. something. They are failing because of the proper information, because they are failing because of you know, lack of proper marketing uh, skills, I would say. There's a whole data about it. When we do researches in this particular area, we've seen that uh, around, you know, whatever, I mean, if you're talking of 90% of the startups are failing, of 90% startups, around 70 to 80% startups fail only because they could not market their products or market offerings properly, or, you know, they could not strategize themselves. They could not find a market for the uh, offering that they are offering to the market right so that is why market research becomes very very important and market research plays a very important role at the very outset also when you're trying to be an entrepreneur and it it never ends even when you you know you are there with the business enterprise in the society you are running it successfully over the period of time still to be able to uh, be sustainable and to be able to grow in future to expand yourself in future you need to do market research continuously so that you are there in the market forever and ever and ever. Because you as an entrepreneur, you know, you would like to have your business entity for a perpetual period of time. We may come and go, the business is always there, right? So that is why this marketing research or market research becomes very, very important. It is important while you are identifying or selecting the business idea. At the same time, it is important when you have it is important at every stage of entrepreneurship, I would say. So once, suppose we're talking of your, you have screened the opportunities, which is already there in the market. You have identified and selected the business idea that can be converted into a business venture. In that case, then you need to do a preliminary survey or research to see whether your idea is marketable or not, right? And only those offerings you would say are marketable which has the potential of profit or which has profitability. Anything which has not, which has no profitability, we say that it cannot be marketed. And we say that there is no business for it, right? And since we are talking business, we should always remember that nothing is for free. There is no free lunch in this world. We need to have something in return, which is, you know, uh, which can be economically measured also. That is 
profitability is to be there. So why do we do market research? We do market research for the accurate and thorough information, which is very important for all the business enterprises. It provides about the prospective and existing customers, the competitors and the industry in general. As we proceed in the further uh, proceed further in the session, we would see that we need to do two kinds of researches. One for your particular offering that you're going to do, and for the industry where you're going to fit in. Because as an entrepreneur, you are belonging to some category, you are belonging to some industry where you have to survive, where you have to grow, right? So in both the cases, we have to have, we need to have proper information about all the stakeholders in the environment, which is supra system, which is there where, where your system will exist. We need to have a proper information of all those things. And it, it also determines whether the business idea that you're uh, coming up or the prototype that you are developing, whether it is it has the feasibility, it has the uh, prof profitability or not, right? And then it can also suggest you further when you are done, when you are um, already there in the market with your prototype, which you have developed, then it, it in fact tells you whether you can make certain strategies such as segmenting the market, targeting the market, and then positioning yourself in the market so that you are there for a longer period of time. So marketing research, very, very important. And if I say, uh, if I try to conclude, why do we do market research? I would say whether you are starting a company, you are introducing a new product or you're growing your business on a larger scale. Market research takes your understanding to the next level and it takes you to the segment where you are working in and it's giving you a proper picture, you know, how you're going to do in the coming years of your life. And it, the, the reports that are generated through market research, they are capable of changing the direction of these startups as they provide entrepreneurs with you know, important inputs, such as two important inputs. What is happening in the market and what's happening in the minds of consumers? Right? The, there are two important things which one should always know. One is what is happening in the market where you are there. And the other thing is what is happening in the minds of consumers. So is this, this creates the dynamism in the market. We say that the market is not static, it is dynamic. And why it is dynamic? Because everything, everything, every time, the consumers have you know, a changing pattern of their needs and demands. So unless we are, we as an entrepreneur, unless we are able to uh, cope up with the changing needs and demands, which is there amongst the consumers, we won't be able to survive and grow, right? We also need to check uh, whether there is a demand of, for product or service in the market or not. Who is going to buy the product or service? What is the size of the potential market that you're going to uh, do? What price should be charged? At what price you can have the uh, particular size of the market? And the, what is the most appropriate business uh, or distribution channel that you're going to use to distribute your commodities to the end users? And then it also tells you what is the best time to launch your product or services in the market. You may be ready, but sometimes as an entrepreneur, you may have to wait for, you must have seen in case of you know, movies that even when they're ready with their movies, sometimes they wait for a proper time to showcase it. Likewise, same thing is happening on the, in, in entrepreneurship only. You are ready with, with everything, but before launching your market offering to the market, we need to wait for the right time. It does not happen with every products and services, but yes, there are certain products and services wherein we may have to wait for a certain period of time. And then we need to understand how the resources, you know, they are utilized effectively. You, whatever resources that you have, whenever you're going to, whenever you're going to do some kind of analysis in, in business, we'd say the most important analysis is SWOT analysis, that is strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, right? So these, these opportunities are important. Strengths and weaknesses, they are within the system. Within the system, when I say, that means they are within you, within the organization that you're creating, within the business entity that you're cre creating. At the same time, which you, can, which you can control or some amount of control you can have. But at the same time, since you are a system, you are working in a supra system. And when I say system, which is working in a supra system, that means you are influencing the market at the same time, what supra system. And at the same time, uh, you know, you are also getting influenced with the supra system. That means all the opportunities and threats, they are being thrown or they are being posed or being, being given from the supra system to your particular system. So somewhere we need to be aware. We need to be well informed by either 
we are going to start a new venture or we are managing a new venture, we need to have a thorough information about all these things, right? And as I said, whenever there is a business, risk is always there. So to mitigate that risk also, we need to have a proper market research so that we can establish some amount of control on the risk that is going to be in the business. So what is market research? Why is why market research we have seen? Now we have to see what is market research. What do we mean when we are saying market research? So we say market research is a systematic gathering of data about people or players in the market. There are people in the market, there are various stakeholders in the market. So what do we do in market research? We try to create or gather the systematic data of the players in the market, and then we analyze it, interpret it, and summarize it. Summarize it means we are trying to make a report of it so that it can be made use to it to make more informed decisions about the company's strategies, operations, and potential customer base. It, it, it includes social and opinion research, both kinds of researches it uses, and it uses statistical and analytical methods and techniques of the applied social sciences to gain insight or support the decision-making that you have to do in your market. It is all about the market that you are in and you are about to enter. Market research is both, right? And it, it involves, uh, you know, to see the past, present, and potential, you know, customers for your products or services. So when we uh, say market research, that means we are trying to research about the past of the customers, what they were, what were the behavior that we were show, showcasing in the past, what is the present demand in the market, and where is the market growing towards in the uh, due course of time. That is what is the future of the customers for your market offering. Mar market offering means the products or services that you are going to cater to the market. So if we see what is to be researched, what kinds of information that we need to have and what researches, what are the areas of researches where we need to collect information, we can say that there are, we need to study the trends of the market, the demand pattern of the market, the features to be introduced in the product or services, the attribute which is going to meet the demand in the market, right? The target audience, we need to study them. The other potential customers who may not be customers uh, for this particular time of uh, uh, time, but maybe in future they can, be converted as your actual customers, then you need to understand the changing consumer needs and preferences for that also need to be checked. The competitors, most important, the competitors we need to analyze, the industry shifts, when the whole industry is shifting, we need to see and all, what are the laws and policies, you know, that are there, in the, that are prevailing in the society, which is going to affect your business, right? So this is, uh, this is all we try to see when we are trying to do the market research. So now we can say that we can divide the whole market research into two types. One is exploratory market research and the other would be specific market research, right? So when we do specific uh, exploratory market research, that is the first step. When you are not into the business, you are trying to enter into a business, you are a budding entrepreneur, while you are sensing the business opportunity, while you are screening the business ideas that, that is floating in your mind, when you are screening those ideas, then you do exploratory market research, right? And just, uh, just after you have selected the business idea, now you are ready to test it further, then you do specific market research. The, for a new product or development, maybe if you are developing a new product and going to give it to the society, or if you, are dealing with the product or services which is already there in the market, but with the added attributes, but with the added features, you are going to tap the unmet demand which is there in the market, right? So for, even for this, you need to do some specific business uh, market research. Now we'll see, uh, since I said market research starts with gathering of the information, right? So information gathering can we can uh, do uh, through two ways. Or we can say that there are two sources of gathering the information. One is the primary information, which is called primary data. And the other is secondary information, which is called secondary data, right? Secondary data, as we all know, is that information or that data, which is already published or presented somewhere, right? It may be in the form of books, it may be in the forms of journals or reports or maybe balance sheets of the companies or whatsoever you can think of. So what is already published is secondary data. And uh, the most important sources of secondary data for business 
persons or budding entrepreneurs can be the industry associations and trade associations because they publish their annual outlooks and in the annual outlooks it is always shown which industry is facing what which industry is going where so if you can get access to the uh, reports or annual outlooks of the industry associations and trade association that can be very useful for you the labor unions also they also have certain uh, you know documents or reports which can be very very important for you as a budding entrepreneur then there are chambers of commerce they also have their annual reports there are trade journals which is specific to a particular industry that you are trying to suppose you are entering into a parallel industry right so the trade trade journals which you know gives data or report on the apparel industry you may look for that journal uh, uh, you know which can give you the whole information and then you should also go for industry analysis industry analysis again you can go through newspapers you can go through all the reports which are there by the in the chamber of commerce or industry association or one of the very important resource which we often forget is the university faculty members research reports if you enter into any university library you should try to see whatever you know important current researches that have been done you can see that thesis and that that can give you immense information about the industry profile about the industry shift the trends etc right internet there's no need to tell or emphasize that in the, because of this you know advancement in the inform information technology everything that you desire you can get on the internet and then the most important i would say is a source of secondary data would be the competitors websites and materials or manuals so as a budding entrepreneur what is important to go and check your competitor website first how your competitors are working what are the strategies that they are uh, you know formulating or using to be in the market right so these are the secondary data of information and there are certain uh, areas where secondary information won't uh, maybe give the solution to all your problems or uh, may not give the information which you are actually looking for then in that case uh, we may go for primary information or we may need to collect primary data now the sources of primary data can be very many but since we are talking of business i would say that primary data uh, the sources of primary data can be surveys which you do, do or which is already being done that will become secondary data then and then focus group interviews observations what are these will come one to one in depth interviews and ethnography so these are the sources or these are the ways through which we can get the primary data right and other than surveys where we are using quantitative researches all the other sources that i've told you focus group observation in depth interviews or ethnography they are all qualitative researches that you need to do as a budding entrepreneur or maybe as a as an entrepreneur to be able to know how to grow in the market now let us see uh, what are these kinds of uh, these types of or methods of data collection one by one right we are talking of primary data now service as we all know what is survey survey is asking customers a series of questions to better understand how they feel about a product's features or about the uh, experience they had during during suppose it's uh, the product is tangible then they can say but if it is intangible in that particular case you need to know the experiences suppose you are uh, going to be in the hospitality sector right so you need to understand the customers what experience do they really want when they enter into a hotel's reception from entering to hotel's reception to going to their rooms and checking out right so in the in the entire process what are their expectations or what is the experience what is the experience where they have wow moment or what is the experience where you know uh, they feel that there is something lacking and they don't have that good experience about it so surveys help you to get all these kinds of information it consists of like list of questions that can be uh, shared with an individual you can share it by phone you can talk to them face to face right or maybe you can uh, use you know various online tools to do these kinds of surveys there are various uh, tools which are used like survey monkey uh, nowadays even google forms 
they are used as survey tools right the second is focus group interviews so what do we do with focal focus group interview do we try to make a group of say 8 to 12 people and which comprises of maybe the in, people from industry people from academia right customers your customers or maybe somebody who is working the trade associations i would say so you can create a group of 8 to 12 people and then you can be you can initiate the discussion just and then as, as a moderator, you can set it in between. You can see where the moderation is going on, what information you can, you can call out from the uh, discussion which is going on in the focused group discussions. And then on the basis of that, you try to uh, you know, devise strategies or design uh, the marketing plans which you're going to do. And then you can use the method of observation to know the needs and desires of the customers. See, gone are the days when, you know, companies wanted to have satisfied customers. Now the competition is so much that merely satisfying the customer is not going to help you grow in the market. So for that, you need to have delighted customers in the market, not only satisfied, but, but also delighted. And when we say delighted customer, that means the efforts that you have to put in to approach them and to serve them, it has to double at the same time, right? So suppose you, you think of a situation where you try to analyze the demands of the customer or needs of the customer, right? So this is the need of the customer and you understood the needs of the customer and you have delivered the same. So what you have delivered and what they desired is equal. That means the customers can be satisfied. Yes, I wanted this and I got this, right? If they wanted this and you cannot deliver this, you are somewhere below. That means you can end up with dissatisfied customer, with, which is a big no-no. You cannot afford to have that. But can you imagine a situation where customers needed this, their demand is this, but the delivery that you're going to make or what you're going to offer to them is much more higher than what they really needed. So if this is the situation, need is below and the delivery is up, that means the gap which is there, this is what can create the delighted customers for your business, right? So for that, you need to understand the customer's expectations. Why are we are doing all such, uh, such activities? Why are we doing this? You know, why are we making surveys? Why are we making observations or focus group discussions or whatever means we are trying to know? Because we are trying to get information about the customer's expectations as much as possible, all the expectations, what they have stated and what they have not stated, but it is there. You know, sometimes customer's expectations, they can be categorized into two parts. One is stated expectations or expressed expectations, and the other is unstated expectations or unexpressed expectations. So if you are able to collate the two, if you can know the stated expectation at the same time, the unstated expectation, then you can design something. Then you can uh, you know, provide something to the customers which makes them delighted and which is a must for you to grow in the business, right? So that is why we are doing, <clears throat> doing all these things. So sometimes to understand the needs, needs means the unstated need to the most which is not expressed. So sometimes to understand the unexpressed need also, the budding entrepreneurs or the persons who are going to, or persons who are already in the business also sometimes, you know, they follow the observation method of market research. And what do they do in the observation method? They just observe. They, there are certain, maybe the company can hire, you know, uh, some researchers who do it for them or they can do it on their own, whatever uh, uh, the case is. So what is being done here is that you have to observe how the, uh, you know, the, prop the product that you're offering in the society is taken by the customers. How are the competitors feeling about you? So you are observing everything. You are observing the distribution channel. You are observing the customers, their, their responses for the uh, kinds of products that they are you know, in the shelf of the uh, markets or maybe of the stores or how the competitors are uh, interacting with their customers. So you're only standing somewhere, observing, observing uh, or they eating and then making notes of it. 
So what is important and what is not important? What is crucial and what is not crucial? And on the basis of that, you're trying to uh, design your plan. On the basis of that, you're uh, trying to formulate your business studies. So that is called observation method. The next is in-depth interviews. Sometimes, <clears throat> see, when we are going for uh, you know marketing, we can either target the whole market or maybe we would like to divide the market into various parts. We may need to segment the market. That is a separate uh, uh, part of discussion altogether. So I'm not going into the segmentation of market, but let me tell you that there are certain you know, business people, uh, they go for individual marketing. And when I say individual marketing, that means you, are, uh, you have segmented the market uh, so uh, narrowly that you are catering to individual customers. Say for example, if you're talking of you know, designers, right? the uh, fashion designers, what they do? They are doing individual marketing. They are designing clothes for Ishwarya Rai. They are designing clothes and accessories for Shah Rukh Khan, or maybe all the celebrities or certain group of people you would say. So in that case, what is important? In that case, how would you get to know what is the trend? What is the uh, competitor's profile? Like Likewise, in that case, we need to go for in-depth interviews, right? Here we do, we take one to one, uh, one in one interview with an individual to understand, to try to understand what is actually required. What is, uh, suppose the customer says you are into apparel industry and the customer is saying, your customer is saying that I want to look graceful yet glamorous. So this is the desire, this is the need. So you have to produce something, you have to make a dress which is graceful and yet glamorous. So for that, uh, what is there in your mind? I mean, this kinds of interview, this kinds, of, this kind of data that you're trying to take from your target audience, or maybe the sample of the target audience. You take the information and then you try to design your product. I'm just taking one example. There, in all the categories, it would fit. So you're trying to design your product or prototype in a way that can suit the customers that you are targeting. And then there is a way called ethnography. This is a very important qualitative research method, I would say. In this case, sometimes the observation may not work. So to get the feel and pulse of the customers, the researchers, they mingle with them. They try to be a part of the group that they're targeting to. Say for example, again, I would take an example. Suppose you are making something uh, for a particular group of people, suppose kisi tribal belt ke liye ab kaam kar hai, hai? And in order to know the needs of that particular region, they may not open up properly. You may not use uh, the observation method or it may not be effective that, may, that much. You may not be able to uh, make effective use of in-depth interviews. Then in that case, ethnography comes into picture. Then in that case, especially in social enterprises, it is seen that, that people use this method, ethnography as a part of research. Herein, the researcher, they become the part of the group they are trying to cater to. And when they become the part of the group, they, they live with them for a you know, longer period of time. And then they try to know what is actually lacking in the society. Where is the demand? And what can we really do for them? Or how it can be created or how it can be delivered? You know, so that it can, it can give maximum satisfaction uh, to the target audience. So all these were the methods of uh, market research. Before we proceed further, if there is certain questions uh, with, the, uh, with the audiences we may take, or if you have some requests to make, uh, if I'm going very fast or something, you can tell me, I'll be a little slow, or maybe then we can finish the whole discussion and then we can open the floor for discussions, whatever you feel like. In between also, if somebody feels like there, there is need to be some clarity, you, you may interfere, right? So, <clears throat> As we've said that uh, there are certain, you know, <clears throat> uh, methods of uh, collecting data. As I said, when we are talking of surveys, we can use, uh, we can have email surveys, we can have SMS survey, or maybe QR code integration is being done nowadays, or social media integration, or the web intercept sources like pop-up sources, on-page surveys. When you are uh, trying to click uh, to see some product or services, you must have noticed that there is some other or similar or maybe different, you know, commodity or some information or feedback pops up. 
so many a times this is just this is all the technique of doing survey for your for the market and then there are phone surveys or face to face surveys and there are two other important you know researches that are being done you know to be able to once you have uh, you know tested your prototype it is all being done you have come up to that stage you have tested it and now you are trying to offer the commodity or service to the market you are uh, you are into existent and now you you are uh, fighting for your sustainability and you for your growth then in that case also two kinds of researches that we do one is called as longitudinal survey research and the other is called as cross sectional survey research so these two important methods of research that we do so longitudinal survey research what is that this means conducting survey research over a continuum of time longer period of time which may be spread across years and decades okay say for example <clears throat> uh we are into pharmaceuticals right in that case we may have to do longitudinal survey research to uh, you know uh, to be able to make sure that the vaccine or the medicine that you are uh, that you have made or you are going to serve to the community to the market is fit and uh, it will help you right so this is called longitudinal research in this kind of research what we do it can be quantitative also it can be qualitative also right when we are doing it for services it can be qualitative when we are doing it for commodities or something which is tangible it will be quantitative so we try try to see we try to observe or collect data for a particular or for a longer period of time time for from the same sample size you have created a sample size say for example uh, again if we take example for a parent industry you want to know what kind of um, say for example dresses that the teenagers you know teenage girls would like to have if you talk of a particular time and you are designing your clothes for a particular time then after that what will happen you will be you know outdated trends will change and you can be outdated so in that case you have to test it for a longer period of time say for 3 4 years how the how the teenagers they behave so you need to take a sample of the teenager audience and you have to see their responses you have to observe their res responses for a longer period of time so every other year what you are doing you are seeing their response for the same sample size that is longitudinal research so for example again if you have to understand the eating habit of a particular group eating habits of uh, you know children below 10 years of age then in that case you need to have a sample of uh, children who are below 10 years of age and then you are trying to check you know for a longer period of time how do they what is their pattern what do they like most how do they eat do they eat frequently or do they eat uh, on a regular intervals so everything you need to check with us same with same sample of uh, sample of data you know sample size for a longer period of time and then we when we are talk, talking of cross sectional that means small small groups we have divided our sample or we have taken different different samples and we are trying to see or we are trying to observe their behavior for a shorter period of time so as a like cross sectional research as i said it is collected to it is conducted to collect insights from a target audience at a particular time interval and it is implemented in various sectors such as retail if we are talking education if we are talking healthcare or maybe small and medium enterprises they generally go for this cross sectional survey research right because this is quick and it helps researchers to collect information in brief time span what quickly can be grabbed from the market and then <clears throat> we are making small small uh, groups of different kinds of samples and then we are trying to take a snapshot of the behavior of the you know group of people that they are exhibiting you are taking it they taking into account the behavior and then you are making a note of it and trying to implement it in your business ideally ideally i would say <clears throat> that the uh, as an entrepreneur you should try to have a combination of both longitudinal researches as well as cross sectional researches because cross because cross sectional researches they are going to give you the <clears throat> picture of you know a comparatively a larger group of people 
maybe for a short period of time, but larger group of people. At the same time, longitudinal, the sample size may be small, but it can tell you what sustainability can you get from the market. So ideally a combination of both of the cross-sectional researches and the longitudinal uh, researches, they should be used. If we try to see what is the difference between cross-sectional research and longitudinal survey research, we can see that cross-sectional studies, they are quick to conduct as compared to longitudinal. And they, you know, uh, longitudinal research, it may last for years or maybe more than a year. It is this cross-sectional is conducted or for a period of time, it is, it is, it is a kind of snapshot, whereas, uh, whereas when we are talking of a longitudinal study, it requires a researcher to revisit participants of the study at proper interval. You have observed something, maybe another, uh, in, in the next month you go and you're observing, in the year ahead you're going and observing. So you have to do it again and again, right? Cross-sectional studies, they are relatively of low cost the cost involved in, in this cross-sectional study is lower. Whereas when we are talking of uh, this uh, longitudinal study, the, it is a little expensive, right? Because you, have, you are there in the market for a longer period of time. Suppose you are hiring a researcher, you may, since the researcher is, is working for a longer period of time, you have to uh, you know, pay them also for that particular time. And longitudinal research, you know, it justifies the cause and effect. What is causing what? Whereas when we are talking of cross-sectional studies, it is it is just telling you the snapshot is just giving you the picture why it is happening or what is causing this to happen it is not being told so it is better to use a mix of both longitudinal and uh, cross sectional researches to uh, do the market now we have known what is market research we, we have known why why do we do market research and we have also seen up to certain extent that how do we do market research now, when you are going to do market research, there are certain essentials. There are certain important considerations that you should consider while venturing into it, while going into it, right? For example, first of all, you need to figure out a budget. What budget can you allot for market study? Then you need to prepare a team of people. It can be from within the system, from within your organization, or maybe you can hire somebody outside the organization. There, nowadays, there are you know, data scientists available. And these data scientists, they are doing uh, these kinds of researches and uh, the reports are you know, uh, being available to them, or to the budding entrepreneurs on a particular price, right? And then you have to be very, very clear what actually do you want from your market research? Do you only want to test the acceptability of the product of, uh, of the offering? Offering means the product and services that you're going to offer in the market. Do you want to check the accept acceptability also only? Or do you also want to check the changing trends in the market? So if you are very specific, uh, if you're very clear in your mind, what you want with your research, it will save your time and money. And then we have to know what is the target audience. You have to identify which is the area of research that you're going to do. You have to draw samples from that particular area only. You, you are supposed to know the behavior of teenagers and you're drawing samples from kids below 10 years of age that is not going to suffice your purpose. So in that case, you have to know your target audience very, very clearly, right? And then we try to, uh, we should try to have open-ended questions when we are, uh, Suppose we are taking in-depth interviews, then in that case, if you give options at various points, if you give options, you may not get the clear idea. So you need to have open-ended questions more in your researches. And mixed research methodology should be used. Quantitative may jai, a qualitative may jai, a mix may jai. Always better is to go for a mixed research method, wherein you have data, some secondary sources, you have data from secondary sources, as well as from primary sources. You are doing some quantitative study as well as the qualitative study, right? So it, it can give you a, a clear picture and overall a better picture of the information that you really want to have. And then you should never, never forget to criticize your own work, especially for the entrepreneur. See, Entrepreneurs, they have to go for action researches. The researches that, be, that is being done in the academia is different. That is called academic research. That has a different connotation altogether. 
it is cyclic in nature but when we are talking of action researches which the entrepreneurs are going to do they are going to undertake they are linear uh, you know process they have linear process so we have to be very very um, uh, in, uh, you know very very liberal in taking the criticisms or the shortcomings which can be there and then unless the respondents you know we are we are talking business and there is no free lunch in this world so unless the respondents whom you are targeting unless they are rewarded you may not get a clear clear picture that is why if you see when you go to malls you can see certain people they are uh, you know standing with <clears throat> some question eyes kuch aise parchon ke sath khade rehte hote hain and they uh, try to seek answers from you and then they would they would say ki sir if you uh, do this you may get a ticket or may you get some uh, what do you call it? some small gift you come you, i will take you to a, to a place we can discuss certain things and you as a token of love and respect we are going to give certain small small gifts to you so unless the respondents are rewarded you are not able to get proper data so keep in mind it should be a win win situation you are getting information in turn you have to give something to the respondents as well right and then <clears throat> researcher can only provide you the information researcher can only provide you the data the report but it is it depends on your wisdom how to use that data and well when to use that that data right it depends on the wisdom of the wisdom of the user of the entrepreneurs so <clears throat> then we do uh, now we need to know when do we do primary researches primary market research and when do we do secondary market research right so primary market research i would say is best suited when a startup want to know about the customers average spending capacity on a particular service of product right what is the average spending capacity you want to know in that case <clears throat> you have to go to the uh, uh, to the respondents to the market and collect the data and then if as a as an entrepreneur if you have no idea about the customers perception and attitude towards the brand suppose you are an innovator you have innovated something <clears throat> you have brought some it can be radical it can be a small innovation but <clears throat> you are an innovation innovator and your product is new your brand is new so you don't know you are completely you know unaware about the customer's perception and attitude towards the brand then in that case you cannot rely on the secondary source of information you have to go for the secondary method of information or primary research methods and then as an entrepreneur if you need to figure out customers views of service improvement say the kind of services that you are going to offer it is already being offered by various people but you want to know what are the improvements that you can make in your services that the customers would come to you to have that service and not go to somewhere else then in that case also we need to have primary research methods then secondary research method won't work much because what is already being done is being done unless you <clears throat> try and add something more isn't it it is not going to suffice the purpose likewise if we are talking of the secondary market resources uh, market researches when or secondary sources of information when do we use that so i would say you uh, you will use secondary research if to find out the total market value of the specific industry now you have known that the product will be accepted by the customers you know that there is a target audience but at the same time now you want to know what is the total market value of particular specific industry where this industry is heading whether this industry is seeing growth in near future or you can see a complacent stage of the industry in near future so for all these you know informations and if you want to know the latest market trends and the emerging technologies in your particular you know area then in that case also you need, you can rely on the secondary sources of information <clears throat> so we have talked of the primary source of information we have talked of the secondary source of information now we do now we see how do we conduct market research so we will see the stages the steps do we uh, that we take to conduct the market research just a moment <clears throat> the first step or the first stage is to define the research purpose and objectives 
and then you will analyze the entire industry and potential market. The third step is to analyze the target audience and then you will put research into action. You've analyzed it and then you are putting the research into action, right? In, at this stage, what is important is that you have to define the research purpose and objectives. What is the purpose of the research for what you're going to do? And what is the objective of the research? Unless you have uh, a proper picture of that, unless you have analyzed it, you cannot go further in the research, right? And now when we, take, uh, when we uh, try to analyze the entire industry and potential market, the as in startup, what we need to know is the that this particular market is doing well, fine. So, what are the you know various angles that can be worked upon? They should first of all try to see how their competitors are working. When we say strategy, see business is a game of strategy only, right? There is uh, two plus two is not four in business. In mathematics, you can say two plus two is four. But when we say business and management, two plus two is not always four. It may be more than four. It may be less than four. So that is why we say two plus two, what we are doing, we are strategizing thing. And when we say strategizing, then strategy means in Hindi, we call it Raniti. And Raniti is what? Niti for run. Run is battlefield. So in battlefield, what is happening? What happens in battlefield? What happened in those days when the kings used to you know, fight battles? What were happening? the kings or the uh, the head of the uh, army would decide the plans the policies of the battle according to the layouts and plans of the competitors the rivals jo bhi dushman hote hain unka unki kya unke kya tarike hain pehle unko janna aur uske according aapne apni sari taiyariyan kar li ki ye battle hame ab is tarike se fight karna hai likewise in strategy सबसे पहले आप सारी सारी चीजों को पता करने के बाद अब जो सबसे बड़ा काम आपने करना है दैट इज टू गो एंड सी दी कॉम्पिटिटर वट हु आर योर कॉम्पिटिटर्स इन द इंडस्ट्री हाउ दे आर वर्किंग एंड वॉट प्लान एंड पॉलिसीज वट स्ट्रेटीज दैट दे आर फॉलोइंग You have to see what is working for them and what is not working the, for them. So, अपनी products के साथ साथ आप अपने competitors की products की भी pluses and minuses को check कर रहे हैं तो उनकी जो कमियां हैं things which are not working for them you know it very well so you can improvise somewhere and then that is the only you can tap the market there aapne usko improvise kiya jahan pe aapka competitor jo hai wo falter kar raha hai wo aapke liye kya ban gayi ek opportunity ban gayi and you can use it you can use it uh, for the for your gain right uh <clears throat> you can see there are certain example there are certain cases also where these researchers or you know they had seen a steep downfall and then bang on after a certain period of time they are there in the market and they are doing so well now for example if you remember uh, maggie for example somewhere in between and then cadbury chocolate <clears throat> or maybe kit kat some chocolate it was you know the, in the market it was shown or see the in this all these drinks also it was shown in the market that there is something some problem with there some bug was found in chocolate or there was something in the maggi which was not healthy and the market has to has to see a steep downfall so how did these company the established companies right so they also have to see uh, they also have to face the uh, face this kinds of downfall how do they combat it how do they come out of it with the help of good market researches so when we say market research that means we need to do two kinds of researches one is the market when we say market that means market and industry and the other is marketing and when we say marketing that means all the mixes of marketing that is product what shall be the product the price the promotion strategy the physical distribution channels the people who are going to help that the processes you know which is there and the physical evidences you are trying to create if your product is intangible in nature so when we are doing market researches in fact we are doing market research as the same time we are also doing trying to do some kind of marketing research with this i would end uh, my talk now the floor is open for open discussion i request students those who are having some of the doubts or queries please let us know either by chat or they can unmute them, uh, themselves yeah, and yeah. speak 
students please if you have any doubts please let us know thanks thanks ramaraji of course i do agree on that that it's all a really a wonderful session by madam we will invite again again uh, dr anupriya madam for the second part of uh, incubation program it's a pleasure always so uh, i request my it team by the time uh, uh, if someone is writing it down it's okay uh, it team please present a uh, letter of acknowledgement for madam uh, dr anupriya ma'am thanks thanks madam of course Thank thanks for so supporting much. thanks for supporting uh, madam cost associated with various models of survey yeah that is why yes that is the most important consideration i would say because you know any kind of researches they involve cost so that is why i say longitudinal researches you can afford only you know when you are established in the market and you have allocated budget for that but suppose you are a, you are a budding entrepreneur and you don't have enough budget for uh, you know uh, research for this kind of research then you have to uh, make use of the secondary sources of information first and with the limited budget then you try to observe either you can do it with the with the team that you have or maybe you can also do it if you are uh, st uh, you starting your uh, you know market on a small level maybe you can do that yeah thanks thanks ma'am uh, thanks to dr anupriya ji uh, for supporting our nb team and all these young entrepreneurs those who are learning here uh, uh, i do agree on this that uh, this market research specifically it's not only for that uh, entrepreneur per se it is always once we are into the business uh, we require this market research again and again every 3 months or 6 months we need to go on think for that how exactly the market is how exactly channelizing our process what exactly the value chains are there if they are supporting or if they are not it totally depends upon that and that is why this particular part it's not only for startup if you are into the business it is very much required every i think uh, quarterly or six monthly so do uh, it becomes all the more important i would say if you are into the business it becomes all the more important the more and that important. is why companies like ernst and young they are research companies and they are doing so well because company needs it you know needs other it. companies they needs it yeah the highest point of course uh, madam uh, talk about do think for the budget whenever you are deciding for uh, going for a market research do allocate some budget on that do work on that whether you will be going for a budget or not whether you are having a money in your hand to go for a research then you actually proceed for those researches your visions and objectives should be very much clear the identification of the target audience if you are into the uh, if you are going for a secondary data research or primary data research or prim primarily to that actually you sit down and discuss about your uh, target audience because based on those target audience you can actually a lot whether you are going for a primary or the secondary the way madam actually explained it is very much clear that when we require this particular primary one and one what can be the differences on the second one what can be the cost incurred in that but you need to think for that of course i do agree on that every business has a group ups and down but do criticize our own business first because once you are criticizing your business then you can actually flourish that is where the way uh, business should go on uh, average uh, madam talk about the improvisation of the primary data improvisation of the uh, market research improvisation of the product which you are working on and of course do look on that uh, use this market research for the competitors for the trade offs specifically because if you are uh, into the business there will be the trade offs coming in and go so you need to look on for those competitions you need to look on on those trade offs and channel in of course process what all the processes are there channel into this and value chain one more thing madam talk about the secondary research data madam has enlisted so many things i only want to know uh, i only want to actually exhibit one more thing or add on to one more thing now the state ministries state, state departments yes. government departments too are exhibiting um in their startup policies in their startup schemes or uh, the way actually today yesterday i went to one of the organization one of the seminar uh, where cii people from uh, government officials that is for our uh, investment uh, opportunities for the from the odisha government is uh, manish sharma and his team complete team actually visited uttar pradesh they have exhibited how exactly the opportunities in the odisha government is and they have explained how what all the pillars for the entrepreneurs how uh, government is supporting what can be the policies they are supporting what leverage or what incentives that particular state governments are giving 
do visit those uh, uh, state government uh, websites too and pages too. And likewise, these types of uh, journals, they are actually uh, printing and giving it handouts to all. That uh, what can be the investment regions and industrial park in Odisha. Because each states are actually nowadays doing it. Uh, do visit, do try to actually attend those seminars too, because there you will get a better idea what exactly those uh, startups, universities, colleges, and the companies, and of course, the government is doing for that. With this, uh, I'm closing my talk, of course. I request IT team to close the letter of government here. Thank you. And uh, thank you to all listeners. Thank you to all learners here present. Uh, we keep on moving. Um, this is the third week. And uh, tomorrow we will be having a second session of the, this third week where we will be talking about the cost. Akshay will be uh, delivering that talk and I will be helping her out what exactly the cost will be done, what can be the budgeting on those costs. So not taking much of the time, thanks to all. Namaste, Namaskar and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you very much.